My name is Conrad Steiner. Tonight's story has the title, Boy in the Storm. Guardian of birth, healer of the sick, comforter of the aged. To the profession of medicine, to the men and women who labor in its cause, this story is dedicated. Our presentation tonight, the field of neurology. The object and point, electric tracings of human brain waves. The case in point, Robert Allen Maxwell. He's 17 years old. By economic standards, he's a very fortunate young man. He has wealth, he has position. Physically, he's much less fortunate. The past seven years of his life have been spent under conditions designed to blight and destroy his entire existence. Due to narrow ignorance and a stupid misunderstanding of a condition which Robert Maxwell is powerless to control, seven years of his young life, years that should have been happy and productive, have been wasted, and wasted without reason. But there was and is a turning point. Oh, there he is now. Little Jack Horner, we call him. Oh, he's off someplace by himself. Robert? This here is Mr. Frankel. He's come take you away. Hello, Robert. Do you remember me? Yes, sir. You're Aunt Flora's lawyer. I'm the administrator for your aunt's estate. How is Aunt Flora? They wouldn't let me go to the hospital. Robert, your aunt passed away last night. She passed away. You mean she's dead? Aunt Flora's dead. I'm sorry to bring you this news, Robert. I have a car waiting. I'm going to take you to a doctor in town. Aunt Flora. All right, boy, let's go. You've got your stuff to pack. Handy, you shove it between their teeth so they don't bite the tongue off. If not, you just get them on their side so the saliva don't strangle them. More trouble than any kid I've ever seen. Sure is a mess, ain't it? Since the boy is the sole heir to the estate, we're obliged to get the best professional advice as to his condition. Now, my own physician recommended you, Dr. Moore. That was very kind of him. Now, the boy was orphaned at the age of two, is that right? His parents were killed in a plane crash back east, and his aunt, uh, Flora Maxwell, took charge of him. Do you happen to know what doctor his aunt consulted at that time? Well, no, I'm, I'm not sure there was anyone. You see, uh, he was kept at home with a tutor. Miss Maxwell was very sensitive about the family reputation. She wanted the boy to have good care, and yet uh, the boy having epilepsy and all. Epilepsy is not a dirty word, Mr. Frankel. I don't mean to criticize you or Miss Maxwell. It's an all too common attitude. Will the boy stay on at the house now? No, uh, there are no relatives, no one to take care of him. He, he needs a home. Well, I suppose we can find somebody to take care of him. I wasn't thinking of someone you hire. I was thinking of foster parents. Not legal foster parents, more like a, a family guardianship. Someone who could give Robert the warmth and kindness and understanding that he needs. Who are you going to get to take care of a boy who has fits? You can't cure an epileptic, can you? Some forms can be cured surgically. The rest can be controlled. We can't cure diabetes either. We can only control it. Well, we'll talk about a home for him later on. Right now, I'd like to put the boy into a hospital for a series of tests to help establish uh, an accurate diagnosis and start the proper treatment. That's all right with me, Doctor. I'm content to leave things entirely in your hands. I think it would be the best way to proceed. I'll send you a complete report. Robert Allen Maxwell was admitted to the Banner Memorial Hospital on the 23rd of August. Aside from a slight nutritional problem, he was in good physical condition. The neurological examination disclosed no evidence of brain damage. 
The blood study showed no evidence of hypoglycemia, a deficiency of sugar in the blood. Examination of the spinal fluid has proved entirely normal. The slight anemia connected with the nutritional deficiency is being corrected by diet and vitamin supplement. As part of the routine diagnostic procedure, an electroencephalogram was run by an EEG technician. The electroencephalograph machine records impulses from eight different brain areas on a moving strip of paper. The styluses of the EEG machine write out the pattern of impulses within the brain in the same way as an electrocardiograph records heart function. The tracing shows a diffuse cerebral dysrhythmia, the classic spike wave pattern which is consistent with epilepsy. On the 30th of August, anticonvulsive medication was started. Robert's pattern on arrival was three to four grand mal seizures per week. After two weeks of treatment, his seizures have been largely controlled. And have you had any more dizziness recently, Bob? No, sir. I feel pretty good. Ah, and then it looks as though we're on the right track. Now we'll start some exercise. You mean games? Mm-hmm. Oh, I don't know. I never played any. Why? Don't you like sports, Bob? Aunt Flora didn't want me to do anything exerting because of my sickness. I used to read a lot, though. Did you know that uh, the Russian writer... Uh, Dostoevsky? Yeah. Uh, he was an epileptic. And uh, the Greek philosopher Socrates. And Julius Caesar. So was Alexander the Great. I told that to Taylor once. He's a butler. He said all those people being crazy didn't make me a great man. Bob, you've got to resign yourself. There are a lot of people who are very stupid about epilepsy. You know, in ancient times, they used to call it the holy sickness because they thought that people afflicted with epilepsy were possessed of a god. And then, a thousand years or so later, they thought that epileptics were possessed of a devil. Don't let it worry you. The important thing is that the advance of medical research has now made it possible to do something about it. You know, Doctor, it's strange. I, I mean, just before it happens, it's like a storm. It's like a big storm gathering. But it's not with clouds. It's just big, bright lights. It's like a, a, a big storm of light. It blinds you. It blinds everything. It's different for every person, Bob. When you get to school, I want you to take up some form of athletics. You don't have to get too strenuous about it, but you'll have a lot less trouble if you exercise. Am I really going to go to school? I mean, regular school? There's no reason why you shouldn't. Say, I got to talking here and I lost all track of time. I'm late. I'll see you a little later this afternoon. Mm -hmm. Further studies have been made, but by the third week, his improvement is unmistakable. The boy, though shy, is cooperative and gets on well with the hospital personnel. Miss Harris? Oh, I, I'm sorry. R really, I'm sorry. It's all right. I'll fix it. But you close your eyes now, and don't you dare move your head again. What do you do with patients who move their heads? Oh, I can be pretty tough. At times, I'm almost ruthless. Like the Queen of Hearts? Hmm? Off with their heads. You know the Queen of Hearts, Alice in Wonderland. Uh-huh. You might call me the Queen of Hearts. All right. You can call me the Mad Hatter. Psychometric tests show that the boy has superior intelligence, although his academic education has been severely neglected. Because of his constant improvement and the diminution of his seizures, the patient has been allowed a considerable amount of freedom within the hospital. Well, hi, Robert. Hello. Uh, how are you? I'm just frantic. We've been rushed all morning. I have to go down to the supply room. Well, uh, you mind if I go with you? I, I was just taking a walk around. Delighted. 
The first time in two years I've had an escort to the supply room. Shall we go? September 28th. Four weeks after the start of medication, the patient has been completely free of seizures for a week and a half. I would therefore suggest that the problem of a foster home for Robert Maxwell be seriously considered at this time. Hi, Miss Harris. Well, hello. What are you doing here? I'm over the hill. I slipped away from my nurse. I, I wanted to see how the Queen of Hearts was doing. Tough as ever. You shouldn't be here, you know. I know. I was just passing by. I saw you in here, and I thought maybe I could buy you a cup of coffee. There's Dr. Moore and Mr. Frankel. Oh, oh excuse me. Uh, I'll, I'll see you later. Hello, Nan. Hello, Dr. Moore. Uh, Miss Harris, meet Mr. Frankel. How do you do? How do you do? Sit down, Mr. Frankel. I've been through quite a list of people that might act as family guardian. We've consulted the bank and, well, you've no idea how the epilepsy complicates things. Mm -hmm. If they're the sort of people that will take him, why, they're of questionable character. And if they're the people that we like, they won't take a boy with epilepsy. Dr. Moore, I don't like to butt in, but uh, would this be about Robert? That's right. Well, it, it's just that I know a couple, friends of mine. Mr. Jennings is with a national insurance company. His wife's with a child guidance clinic. She's a consulting psychologist. They lost a son in Korea, a boy a few years older than Robert. Is that Samuel Jennings? Uh-huh. I know him. That's the thought. But there's still the problem of epilepsy. The Jennings lost a son. If they could get him back, I don't think they'd demand perfection. Do you? Heart's fine, Bob. No more dizziness since you remember, hmm? No. Not even a little momentary haziness since the last change in your medicine? No, doctor, I'm pretty sure of it. Then, as far as we know, this is the fifth week you've gone without a seizure. Doctor, you suppose maybe it stopped? We have every reason to be optimistic, Bob. Just keep on with your medication. Um, tomorrow afternoon, Mr. Frankel is bringing a couple here to meet you, Mr. and Mrs. Jennings. The people I'm supposed to go live with? If you like them. Well, what'll I say to them, Doctor? I mean, what am I supposed to do? How'll I act? No acting to it, Bob. Just be yourself. A 17-year-old boy. They're not going to ask for anything more than that. I've talked with the Jennings, Bob, and they're wonderful people. Well, it's up to you. Doctor, I'm a little nervous about meeting them. No, I think I can say with absolute certainty that it's mutual. Let's go. Robert, I'd like you to meet Mr. and Mrs. Jennings. This is Robert Maxwell. Yes, I know. My name's Sam Jennings. And this is my wife, Marion. How do you do? I must run along. I'll leave you to get acquainted, hmm? Thank you. Well, I'm happy to meet you, Robert. I suppose Dr. Morris told you all about us. Y yes, sir, he has. We live in the suburbs, Robert. That's just outside of town. Yes, ma'am. Do you think maybe you would like to live in the suburbs, Robert? Yes, ma'am. I, I think I'd like the suburbs. I think I'd like it very, very much. Bob, I was just arranging for you to leave us. You're a free man. 
Uh-huh, I guess I am. Nervous? A little bit. It's not so much that. Doctor, whatever's wrong with me, it's not really like being crazy, is it? It has absolutely nothing to do with being crazy. It's an electrochemical process in the brain that... Well, look here. We don't completely understand the mechanism, but anybody is potentially able to have a seizure. Some people have a much greater susceptibility. Now, you described it as a storm, Bob. Actually, it's more like a flood, you might say. If you can imagine that everyone has a dam in their brain, something like this. Now, here is the water behind the dam. Some people have a high dam, so. And when disturbances pour in, they can hold a great deal before it spills over. When it does spill, you have a seizure. You mean it, I could be like I was? It could start again? We haven't had time yet to be sure that your present medication will be completely effective. But I want you to start to school as soon as possible so that you can start living a normal life. There's no guarantee that you might not have another seizure. If you should, we simply change the medication. It's nothing to be alarmed about. I see. Try not to be emotionally upset. Take your medicine and exercise moderately. I'll be seeing you quite frequently at first. The Jennings are picking you up at three, aren't they? Yes. Thank you, Dr. Moore. Thank you very much. By the way, will I ever be able to get married? Say, you've made a more rapid recovery than I realized. Well, can I? No reason why you can't. There's some question about the, the hereditary aspect, but the chances of your children being epileptics are very little greater than anybody else's. Sure, you can get married, Bob. Let me know when you find the right girl, huh? Yes, sir. Thank you, Doctor. I will. Hi, Robert. I, I thought I'd drop in a minute. You're leaving this afternoon. I, I wanted to see you. Well, I was just going downstairs. Like some coffee? I just talked to Dr. Moore. He says I'm pretty well. Doesn't think I'll have any more trouble. I, I wanted to thank you, Nan. For being so wonderful. About what? I don't know. Everything, I guess. I keep thinking of a poem I read a long time ago. The last verse. I always remembered it. In the desert, a fountain is springing. In, in that wild waste, there still is a tree and a bird in, in that solitude singing, which speaks of my spirit to thee. That's all. It's beautiful. What is it? Lord Byron. It's called Stanzas to Augusta. He was very much in love with her. But it was hopeless because she was his sister. Robert, what is it? What's the matter? <laughs> It's all right. It's all over now. Everything's all right. No, no. Not in front of you. Not here, not with you.
Robert. 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 What just happened? It, it doesn't matter. You have to expect it once in a while. It doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean anything at all. It does. It does. I love you. I love you, too. In a very special way. We're friends. We're very close friends. I don't mean that. I love you, Nan. I love you. I don't want anybody else. I understand. More than you know. You're well now. You're going to stay well. You have a whole wonderful, beautiful life ahead of you. Don't make it narrow by loving just one person or one thing. Don't build walls around yourself or your life. Love grows small and cramped and selfish that way. There's so much to love. So many things. So many people. Each one of them in a special way. The girl you'll marry, your wife, your children, a tree in the backyard, your friends, the family next door. Love each one of them with a special love. Please put me on the list. Love me always. Because I'm someone who will always love you. And I'll say goodbye. Write to me, please, once in a while. Will you write to the Queen of Hearts? You continue with this added medication now until I see you again. Remember, if you have any trouble, I'm just as near as your telephone. All right? All right. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you very much. Same here, Doctor. We'll take good care of him. Just bet your life on that. Goodbye, Doctor. Goodbye. Good luck. Nice youngster, isn't he? Uh-huh. Nice youngster. Come on. Buy a cup of coffee. An epileptic is not insane nor is he evil as men have imagined in the past. He is possessed of a disability as logically explainable as a lame leg. But the stigma of fear lives on, a reminder of man's superstitious past. This the doctor must treat, as well as the epilepsy. The practice of medicine does not stop with the administration of a pill or the use of a knife. It must also immunize against ignorance, intolerance, and superstition. These two are forms of sickness, and the practice of medicine is directed toward health.